Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna be talking ice gorsi again. Um, last video we booted off this Synology NAS up here is the 1219 plus and I have a dedicated area on that NAS for ice gorsi. So um, today I want to show you how in Proxmox we're gonna make an ice gorsi shared storage on this Synology NAS and we're gonna have two Proxmox servers look into the same uh, storage and so you can move VMs forth and back if that's what you want or if you just want to put some uh, some ISO files on there so you can deploy VMs from those ISO files on two servers. Uh, one of the servers is oh, it's, it's right here. It's the awesome Lenovo X3650 Model 5. The other one is um, in the second living room and we might have a look at that at some point. But um, yeah, we are um, gonna go to the computer and be messing with this. Okay, here we are at the computer in the living room. And I have prepared a little bit. I have opened the tabs that we need. Uh, right here I have uh, my Synology uh, Rack Station. Isn't that Rack Station? And that's the 1219 Plus. We need to set up the iSCSI part of that. Um, I did, when I built this, I did build an area for iSCSI. And that's volume one over here. That's my iSCSI part of the NAS. So instead of just having a iSCSI as, as part of the normal volume, I made a, a iSCSI thinky for it. But that is really not that important. Let's shut that down again and see what you just do. You go into your iSCSI manager here. So in here, I already have some iSCSI lawns and targets that we're not going to be using. Uh, this one, the boot one we did in the previous video, this one is for VMware, but we're going to be making a new one. I want to make a shared volume on my NAS that two Proxmox servers can see at the same time and use files to do stuff. Not necessarily that they're going to be working on the same files at the same time, but like an ISO file. I can upload an ISO file from one server and then the other server can use that also. So we're gonna make that and to do that we, we need a new LAN and LAN is it's kind of like a disk. It's just network attached disk. Pick that and then we can see we have the iSCSI boot LAN and we have an iSCSI VMware LAN. So we're gonna create one and we're gonna call it uh, I just deleted it because I wanted to redo it in the video, but we're gonna call it My Playhouse iSCSI Proxmox 01, just in case I need a 02. We get to pick which storage we want to put it on, and as I said, I have made storage uh, volume number one for this specific, so we're gonna put it there. Then we can tell it how many, how much data to be using, and then um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it one terabyte, uh, there is two terabytes available. I'm going to make it thin provisioning, so it's not going to be that bad. So 1024 gigabytes, and then we're going to make it thin so that it only takes up the space as we use it. And then we're going to advance features and see what we have here. I don't think we need that. Okay, no advanced features at the moment, but we're going to be um, adding some. So next, and here it asks if we want to create an iSCSI target um, at the same time. The LON is like the drive, but the target is like the service thing that makes it available and takes requests and yeah, and, and communicates from the servers and down to this drive. So that's the one that we are going to be creating next. And we're going to call that something brilliant. So we're gonna call it that. And we can set up some security uh, so that the Proxmox servers will need a password to get on here. It's really easy, you, you give it a name and a password and yeah. We're just gonna leave that blank. I'm not gonna be storing anything here that is of any importance whatsoever or anything that you can't download from the internet yourself. Probably just some ISO files. So next, uh, summary, thank you. And we have created that. Um, nice. 
So let's overview. You can see now we have three targets. We have three lawns. And we have Ice Gushy Boot, Ice Gushy Connected. Why is something connected here already? So already the Proxmox, the new Proxmox server has connected to this. Uh, okay, it must be a stubborn one. Um, but before anything connects to it, which is too late, we need to make it available to more machines. You can kind of see down here it says multiple sessions. So if we want more than one server to get access to this, well, we have to enable that. So uh, we do that under action and edit and advanced. And here we get some red text, which is kind of important that um, in order to avoid serious data corruption, please make sure that the file system on your lawn is cluster aware, such as VMFS. Uh, and there's a couple of other ones as well. So yeah, we're gonna enable it anyway. I'm gonna pick a um, file system that is not, I don't think it's that cluster aware. So it's probably not the best thing to do. I will be careful not to change the same files at the same time, which is of course impossible. And as soon as we did that, the other server also connected and they weren't supposed to do that because I told them not to. Well, they did anyway. So here we have the server out there in the data center. Now we just saw the, the X3650 M5. And if we go to data center and storage, we will see that there is no, um, there is no iSCSI here. So we need to add some iSCSI, even though it has already connected to the iSCSI, probably because I didn't boot the system. I just deleted it and might not even have, have gone through so yeah we're gonna we're gonna add it again proxmox has iSCSI as a as a kind of a service here so here is iSCSI we can select that we can also make some uh, zfs over iSCSI i'm not sure how that works so i'm not gonna pick that but we're just gonna select the clean iSCSI here and here we get to give it some kind of an id so we're gonna we're gonna call this there and in that's just a name and here we, we give it the IP number that it has to communicate with there I have already made a mistake so we're gonna go back and fix that because I have two IP numbers on my Synology NAS here and right now this one is using the wrong one one IP number uh, which both are a uh, network port out the back but one IP number is one gigabit and the other one is 10 gigabit. And uh, right now it's set to all ports, which is uh, of course okay. But I only wanted to use the 10 gigabit for this one. So we're gonna pick that one. We're gonna give it the right one now. So, oh, I didn't really tell you what I did here, did I? In Synology, you have the possibilities of telling it uh, different services to use different ports on the back. So what I did was that I um, I didn't use all of the network ports, I just used that one port. So yeah, that was kind of what I did. That means that you can you can have one port for your FTP, you can have another port for web service, you can have one port for management, you can do, well, you get the drift, right? And go back here. Uh, we have that right port. And then when we click down, we have the targets that we can connect to. And the one that we just created is 11, I guess. I think it's that one. Let's go back and check. That's called 11. Corresponds with this number. It kind of got the same IQN number. Probably why it connected all by itself. So, and this one is complaining. I'm not allowed to put a plus there. So, yeah. Add that. So we have, we have that. Cool. Then let's go on to the other server. And we kind of just have to do the same thing. Storage. Yeah. There. So both of them now have this ice gossy available. Uh, or it has connected. But we need to make a drive on this. So let's just let's just do that here. So if we select our 
Genealogy 1219 and we select add. We can put something on top of that. This would be one of the cluster aware file systems and this gloster I'm guessing would probably be another one. I am just going to be putting a ordinary LVM onto there. We're going to call that Genealogy. Just so we know what box it's on. And we're going to uh, from this drop down menu, we can now select the ice gussy and we can base. Yes, we have one terabyte there, uh, base volume, and then we can give it a volume name and we're gonna call it. Uh, what are we gonna call it? Georgia. And I guess that's good. Let's try that. Yikes! Uh, we probably have to call it something else. So that name it didn't like. So let's try. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, that just gives us two mistakes instead. Hmm. Okay, that was stupid. I rebooted and um, yeah, it was still bugging me. So I've, off screen, I've been trying different stuff. Um, I just managed to create this. So we'll just go in and see what I did. So edit. I call it NAS as a volume group. So that's very, very brilliant of me. Um, but otherwise, I call it Synology NAS and I've shared it as well. So um, let's see. Now we have this thing. So let's see if we can store something on it. So the big question is, is uh, well, there isn't anything on here and that's because this storage is used for virtual machines and not as much to put the image files on. Uh, that's they're kind of on this local thing and you don't get the same options as in VMware to put whatever you want wherever you want. Um, probably someone will tell me in the comments please how you do that. If I want to put um, my image files on here as well. Uh, that would be awesome. So, but we can put a VM on there. So let's try that. So create VM. And we're gonna put it on this Proxbox node. That's a good idea. We call it number 100. Yeah, I just wanna make sure that this one over here, that's called, we have a 100 over here. So let's, let's start with number 200 over here, just. I'm probably never gonna move any of this, but we're gonna give it a name. Oh, that's not allowed. Not allowed. Not allowed. Okay, test. There. Thanks. Okay. Storage. Local. Oh, that's okay. That's for the ISO file. Yes, sir. I just uploaded that, so that is available. And uh, we need to tell it what this is. It's a Microsoft thing. Yes. Next. System. Graphics card. It's probably okay. Uh, I'm not gonna try to be wise about that. Storage. We can put it on our Synology NAS here. I think that one will be good. And we need to give it some gigabytes. 50. Should help. Next. CPU. There. Next. Megabytes. Really? Okay. Eight gigabytes. Memory. Next. Network. I'm sure that's fine. Great. Confirm. Start of the creation. Now we're just gonna let's just create it. Let's see. There. We have something on here. It's taking up 50 gigabytes. Yikes. But as I set up thin provisioning uh, on the Synology NAS, it's not actively taking up 50 gigabytes already because the Synology NAS is not giving away that much. Maybe we can see that. Plums, Proxmox. We have used 132 kilobytes, even though it thinks it has 50 gigabytes. So cool. Let's move on. Let's try and boot this thing. Start. And it's going to be installing Windows. I'm not going to be bothering you with that. So be right back. 
Server 2019 has completed installation. It's not as if we need it for anything, just to want to do something. So minimize that. And we can see that it's still running here in the background and it's taking up space on our Synology storage. It's right there, 50 gigabytes it's, it's taking up. Let's see how much this is over here. It's using 9.23 gigabyte at the moment. So that is not really bad. Let's go back. We can't really do much with it. Um, I went over to the other out in the data center and I also created this Synology NAS here. I had to uh, create the same storage LVM on this one. And so now when we go down to the host and check out the storage, it sees the same data here. And if we click down here, we can see that there is our VM. We can't do much with it. I am not totally sure how this works yet. In VMware, I would know how to move this over. On, in Proxmox, I am still not sure how to do that. So. so if you only have one Proxmox server, you just make an iSCSI target up here with a LAN, and then you can um, well access that from your Proxmox server and everything is good and you can put all of your virtual machines on there and you can probably migrate them forth and back from some local storage we need to try that at some point but when you have multiple proxmox servers well we need to figure out how to do that i haven't figured that out yet so uh, if you're way smarter than me which you probably are you can tell me in the comments so that i don't have to figure this out by myself just to read your comments i do that anyway so uh, Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again. Remember to like this video. Well, something is working. So, um, and have a nice day. Bye bye.